Imogen Heap, live at our piano in our soundcheck studio. That is the new single from her uh, new record called Ellipse, which is out today. Uh, the single, of course, very different sound on the record, Imogen. Yes, yeah, it was a special version just for you. It, it was beautiful. <laughs> it's, I mean, you really, you know, the, the, when you strip away all the production, you're left with the song. Yeah. And the song has to stand or fall on its own feet. Absolutely, yeah. This is the single. Ellipse is the record. We've spent the first half of the show debating, you know, yeah. what's the future for, of, of music? Is it in the album or the single? Yeah. What do you think? Well, I mean, today being my album launch, of course, I have to stick up for the album. Um, but I definitely feel, as an artist, um, I really struggle with this whole kind of spending, for me, especially it takes a very long time for me to make a record because it's just me on my own in the studio for a year. Um, and I really feel very detached from this world that I'm meant to be writing about when I'm in there doing my, my record because I can't seem to exist both being social and kind of personally in the studio at the same time. And I really feel like um, Ellipse is the last album that I'm going to be doing in that fashion. Um, it just feels wrong in this day and age where things can be released instantly. And sometimes you're living with a song for four years that you, you wrote four years ago and, and then you still have to kind of believe in it and, and be a part of it even four years later when you're, you know, you're out touring it. And So I think that they can coexist. I think that I think what I'm going to do with my next album is kind of the same kind of Radiohead thing, but instead of treating them as just singular entities um, one at a time over the course of the rest of my life, um, I do think there is still a very much a place for albums because, you know, I look back on my, my past career and I've, I wrote very different songs, you know, when I was 17, 18, 19, and they exist uh, as a body of work together. And now, continually, I'll, I'll hopefully keep progressing. And, uh, and my, my record, my, my songs will sound very different over the years, and I want to collect them together. But over the course of four years of releasing one every three months, put it out straight away as soon as I've done it, and then collect an album together and tie them together. Well, and it, the single has been a huge boost for your career. I mean, single songs, individual tracks released to shows like, you know, The O.C. and and to films like Garden State, your collaboration with uh, with the band Fru Fru, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the Narnia movies and stuff. I mean, these are single tracks. Do you do you think of those as kind of standalone pieces for specific projects? Um, I think actually what's great about um, you know, the fact that we can now kind of listen, try before we buy is that it does give this um, fantastic um, open creative space um, that we're not limited to just having one or two or three you know, singles that we have to write for radio for the, the hit that's going to launch the album. Because there is this open um, listening capability, um, people can listen to the songs. That kind of idea of a single isn't really existent anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't really make sense because... Um, because you can have a song in a film, you know, you can have, like, you know, Let Go was never was never planned to be a single for Fru Fru, but perhaps it should have been, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was it was in this movie, and you have many possibilities now. So it becomes a, a, a single, um, almost, by definition, almost in retrospect, because it, it's a single track that people have, and, you yeah. know, people buy that Garden State soundtrack, and it's the, the one track buy Fru Fru that they have, yeah. or they buy that, you know, Six Feet Under soundtrack, and you're, you know, you have a single track on it. Yeah. So I guess, it, it, you know, you begin to have to, I don't know, mm. change your definitions of what yeah. singles are, just as we were talking before about yeah. the changing definition of the album. Yeah. Um, how is it working with, I mean, you've, you've talked about uh, on your website wanting to do soundtrack. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's a big format. That's a big canvas to, yeah, to paint on. Yeah, film score as opposed yeah. to, yeah. As right. opposed to doing a song, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very much so when I was a little girl. That's what I, I really wanted to do. I wanted to travel around the world with my own personal orchestra and my own personal, um, you know, maybe now solar powered plane, um, and I'll go around the world doing that. Um, and maybe I'll eventually end up doing that. Who knows? Um, but yeah, definitely the instrumental compositional arrangement side of things, um, I'd really love to still get into. But it's not just that, you know, I want to write for dance music. I want to, I want to write for theatre. There's so much more I want to do, which now I feel like I have this, you know, I have four albums now, which I, I, I love and I've done. Um, but I feel like I want to do more now. So this is also another reason for not doing, sitting, at, at, you know, in my studio for a year doing a record and then spending the next three years just promoting that. I feel like that's one side of me and I really want to do maybe one month I'll do a score for a film or maybe that's a bit optimistic, maybe three months do a score for a film, um, produce somebody else's album in a couple of months and then and then release one of my own. And, and this way it feels, it just feels... Um, it's it's hard to live with a song for so long, and then and then and only then after four years, you know, have it out. I just I feel like I want them out already, out of me, out doing their thing and having a little journey of their own, um, and then later, yeah, piece them together. 
So when you do come back to some of those older songs, those older records, do they seem like the work of someone else? Do you think, wow, that's that's where I was back then? Yeah, sometimes they do. Um, and I forget most of, the, most of the things that went on in the studio that, I've, of course, I've spent hours and hours and hours noodling over every single tiny little detail that I would never be able to hear in 10 years' time. And I've forget, forgotten everything that I've done. But as a body of work, it, it works. Um, but I look, at, I look at my old records more, more as um, old photographs of myself that I'm kind of a little bit embarrassed, but, <laughs> but kind of like, oh, you know, that's, that's what I was like when I was 17. And I can't throw away that one piece of clothing, you know, that's still in the back of my wardrobe because it reminds me of a boyfriend or something, you know. And that's how I feel about my albums. We're speaking with Imogen Heap. Her new album is out today. It's called Ellipse. And we've already heard an acoustic version of the, of the single called First Train Home. Uh, last song on the record called Half Life is actually much closer to what you're about to do here in the studio. Yes, it is, yeah. I mean, you've got string orchestra coming in later in the song, but so this, you know, sort of rearranging or dearranging this song down to just you and the piano, a little less work, I would think, than yeah, with yeah. First Train Home. <laughs> yeah, this is more as it, as it is on the record, yeah. Half Life is the name of the song. Imogen Heap performing live for us here in our Soundcheck studio. <laughs> 